And good afternoon, everyone. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and this is the Friday Afternoon Kiso Vlog Network. If you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. We are recording now live till 5, and then we'll post it up on YouTube, so you can come by later and do a call letter search for KC9 VKV, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and that will take you to our Kiso Vlog page, where we're now featuring about 860 uh, some odd uh, Kiso Vlog air checks. Also this afternoon, we're running four internet SDR receivers monitoring Rochester, New York, Atlanta, Georgia, Arlington, Virginia, and Milford, Pennsylvania, trying to get a better copy on our 100-watt friends. And the audio from these four SDR receivers comes up on a six-position rotary selector. Also on this selector is our local receiver audio. And today, our local receiver is running two large 10-foot vertical magnetic loop antennas, one aimed north and south, the other east and west. The north-south mag loop can be rotated. And they're selected by a three-position rotary selector. Position three of this selector is a co-phase option that many times is three to four dB hotter than mag loop one or two by themselves. We do use a lot of rotary selectors in our shack, mainly because there's nothing faster than a rotary switch for comparing multiple signals. And today we'll be running two separate transmit and receive radios. Our normal highly modified Yaesu FT990 will be the transmit radio, and an ICOM 7300 will be our test receive radio. The idea being that the 7300 has a lot newer digital receive technology, so that's what we'll be evaluating. One of yesterday's great radios, the Yazoo, Yazoo FT990, and an A-B test with the newer ICOM Digital 7300. Of course, this is just a sidewalk survey because they will not be sharing the same antenna. The 990 will be on a resonant no SWR dipole antenna, and the 7300 will be using our large twin 10-foot magnetic loop antennas with cofase option. Also today, for the first time, we'll be running our new visual input source indicator. So when we switch receivers from the 7300 to the 990, you'll be able to hear the switch and see the switch automatically. And since it is an input source indicator, you'll also be able to see which of the internet SDR receivers I might be using at the moment. You'll have to check it out on our YouTube uh, QSO Vlog video. Our new visual input source indicator. Well, those are our working conditions. How about yours? This is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog network. And now let's uh, check in and see if Charlie K1GZL is on the frequency to bring us up to date on the latest 40 meter band propagation. Charlie's QTH is up in the northern New Hampshire area near the Canadian border, like about four miles. Charlie, you got a copy? I sure do, uh, Jim. 89BKV, K1GZL, Clarksville, Northern New Hampshire, in the clouds. We are sucked in. We have been all day. Uh, visibility now is about 150 feet, and uh, we're getting range just not fully. Way up to 34 degrees. And uh, we had some freezing rain early uh, this morning. Rain early uh, this morning. So it's a miserable day. Propagation is uh, very good. Uh, Jim, you're at 25 over 9 uh, receiving you direct. As, of course, I do not have a computer uh, here. <clears throat> but it's remarkable. It's absolutely remarkable. Uh, what uh, you can find across the world as far as difference in uh, weather from one place to another. I was talking to Ian VK3MO early this morning and he was saying how he had to irrigate uh, his farmland completely because it's gotten very dusty and very dry and very hot. In fact, uh, I've got a second or two of them talking about the, the heat. Okay, there you are, uh, Jim, but boy, I'll tell you, they've had it down there. 
uh, we have about, uh, <clears throat> I'd say, six to uh, eight inches of snow left on the ground, which is pretty light for this season, and we have been completely snow-covered since the 7th of November, and here it is, the 27th of December, and that's normal. We hold on to the snow until the middle of April, giving us five uh, straight uh, months. VK, uh, yeah, VK, KC9, VKV, K1G, ZL, if you copy. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, and I, I'm just curious. You do live up on that hill, that uh, that mountain kind of thing, 2,000 some odd feet above uh, uh, sea level. Is there a temperature difference between where you are and, say, the lower areas around you? The lower areas around you. Oh yes, oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, for a couple of reasons, <clears throat> uh, you take Colebrook. Colebrook. Uh, is where uh, I do most of my shopping and uh, banking or whatever. Uh, that is at uh, 1,000 feet, right at 1,013 feet on Main Street in Colebrook. And we're at 2,030 feet up here, or twice the elevation above sea level. Now, there are two uh, aspects of this uh, as far as the weather goes. Uh, when uh, uh, when we get uh, a, a, a west and northwest flow, and even a south-southwest flow, uh, the moisture is forced up along the higher elevation and squeezes out, squeezes out moisture. In other words, uh, well, if I have, say, a south-southwest wind, uh, and uh, they're having, say, uh, snow flurries or uh, rain and snow mixed maybe down in Colebrook, uh, that moisture is forced up uh, to my level in nine air miles. It's ten road miles, but nine air miles. And it, uh, it's like taking a wet sponge right in your hand and uh, squeezing the water out. Now, that's what happens when moisture is forced up the side of a hill. It's called Eric. Uh, uh, it's uh, up sloping. Uh, uh, it's up sloping, and it just squeezes out the moisture. I even get more of that uh, on the northwest side. Uh, and moisture is swinging around a storm, which might be out in the Gulf of Maine or in eastern Maine or Nova Scotia, and the backlash hits us. That moisture is coming across the Canadian countryside, which is much lower than I am up here. Uh, and I'm only four air miles east and southeast of the Quebec, they say, Quebec border. And uh, that moisture going over Sherbrooke is, uh, you know, it, it's there. And they may be having light rain or snow or whatever. Uh, but they're only just under 500 feet or 485. And that gets hits the side of the hills here and up it goes. And as it goes, you're taking your hands with that wet sponge and squeezing it. You know, as it goes uphill, it can't hold the moisture as well, and down she comes. Down she comes uh, with additional snow. So we average um, over 190 inches of snow on an average year. And uh, the last season, we had the maximum at 200, uh, 272 inches. So we uh, we got clobbered last year at Jim K1G's at L. Go ahead. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, uh, gosh, uh, Arlington, Virginia just kind of faded out, so I, uh, I moved up to my uh, local uh, receivers, uh, the uh, 7300 and the uh, 990, and uh, it was uh, neck and neck between those two, uh, although, you know, one is running a, a, a dipole antenna and the other is running a twin 10-foot uh, uh, magnetic loop uh, antennas uh, in, uh, in the uh, co-phase mode, so uh, the uh, the 990 and the 7300 uh, quality was it just sounded just about the same now uh, when that uh, moisture comes up obviously then it uh, it deliberately settles on your antenna is that a roger uh yeah normally if it's a dry snow there's no problem it falls right off but if you get a wet snow at like 31 degrees or 31 and a half degrees then it sticks uh, and freezing rain sticks to it. The SWR goes nuts. There's no light. There's no ice on the antennas now. But when it rains, my resonant frequency drops down, and I do not have an antenna tuner here. Uh, but uh, uh, oh yeah, uh, we're we're used to this sort of thing, and 
the town of Clarksville, northern New Hampshire here, in uh, Upper Coos County, C-O-O-S, two dots over the second O, Coos County, uh, the, uh, the uh, town plows you out, uh, plows you out, and uh, uh, we don't uh, seem to be bothered by taxes from the plowing, which I'm very happy. You've got to be plowed out up here, and you absolutely have to have four-wheel drive. If you don't have four-wheel drive, there are many days you're not going anywhere. Go ahead. <laughs> Roger that. Roger that. Well, uh, hopefully everything will stay tranquil up there, and uh, you'll be able to make your uh, almost uh, everyday uh, morning contact uh, to Australia. Roger, Roger. Uh, well, we're going to try. We're going to try, uh, Jim. You're coming in very well here. Here's a few seconds of your signal. Well, the 9900 and the 7300, uh, quality-wise, it uh, sounded just about the same. Now, uh, when that uh, moisture comes up, obviously then it uh, it deliberately settles on your antenna. Is that a Roger? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it picks me out. Okay, Jim, look, I'll let you get uh, going with other people. There may be many waiting. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse my voice, it's a little off. Uh, and I'll catch you next, hopefully next Friday. Uh, next Friday, and uh, uh, I just hope that the weather is clear and then I can get output here. I don't think I'm running more than 400 watts, 500 watts out. And my SWR is horrible uh, today. Uh, I'm tuned up much lower in the band. Uh, KZ9, VKV, K1, GZL. Always a good one, Jim. Great. Roger, Roger, Charlie Three's up that way, and thanks for uh, checking in and saying hello and uh, keeping us uh, advised on what's going up on your neck of the woods there. The threes to you, sir, and have a great weekend. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and a reminder, this is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network, and we're recording now live till 5, so if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. We'll post uh, this recording up on YouTube in the next couple of days. So when you go to YouTube, just do a call letter search for KC9VKV, and that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. Right now, uh, we've got about uh, 870 or so uh, uh, air checks uh, recorded uh, and uh, years. Uh, if you participate today, it will be called My Group Air Check 122719. Uh, this is KC9 VKV listening. Whiskey 3, Golf Tingo Radio. Uh, Whiskey 3 Station, come back with a call sign again, please. Uh, Whiskey 3, Golf Tingo Radio. Roger, Roger, what's the name there? Recordings of my radio on your show, but today I'm using a different radio, so I wanted to see if uh, how it's sounding your way and see if I need to make any changes to it. Well, Scott, it sounds pretty good. I am getting a little bit of uh, local uh, static. Uh, I think it may be a, a leftover from uh, Christmas. <laughs> Somebody's Christmas decorated. It sounds very similar to uh, some kind of Christmas uh, uh, electronic uh, celebration. Roger, Roger. <laughs> Roger, Roger. Well, my normal go to radio is a DX3000. Microphone. Um, right now, I'm talking to you on a ICOM 7300, and I'm using the ICOM SM50 microphone um, barefoot, and I'm coming to you on a long wire, a 117 foot um, uh, wire that's in an inverted L antenna, and just barefoot, so I'm not sure if I'm making the trip uh, that great to you today. And not normally I run an amplifier, but uh, I have the 7300 in a sack on its own uh, on its own path, and it just runs barefoot all the time. Roger, Roger, Scott. Well, it sounded really good, sir, and I am copying you on a 7300. We're testing out uh, the receive uh, 7300 uh, for uh, the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, and we're uh, cutting in between the 990 and the 7300. Uh, the 990 is a, is a classic in its own its own way, and we've uh, got it uh, modified uh, to extend its uh, frequency, flat frequency response. And uh, so, uh, when we switch back and forth from the 7300 to the uh, 990, the the audio quality is is uh, very, very, very similar. And um, uh, we are um, have a. Um, <laughs> 
an input source indicator, a visual input source indicator, and that is, uh, you know, we're running this uh, six position uh, input select, uh, which has uh, the 7300, the 990, Rochester SDR, Milford SDR, Atlanta SDR, and Arlington SDR on it, and uh, there is a, um, a visual input source indicator on the set that will show you as uh, you're listening to the uh, videotape playback exactly where I am as far as the input source. Uh, we have uh, a lights uh, and the camera's action, but no, we have six lights and and uh, along beside them the name of the uh, entity that uh, it's related to. So when we switch our inputs, uh, that light switches and we'll let you know exactly what we're doing. So on your audio, uh, you know, obviously the 7300 is <laughs> uh, beautiful. Uh, your EQ curve is, is excellent and uh, your dynamic range being a 7300 is running about uh, uh, two and a half to three dB dynamic range, so your average uh, percent of peak modulation is about 80 to 85 percent. Roger? Yeah, copy that, copy that, uh, Roger. I'm, I'm trying to decide whether I really love this Icom SM50 microphone or whether I should uh, get the Heil microphone on a switch box and run it on this radio or maybe get like a Heil ICM. Um, some people love this microphone, some people don't, so I'm just trying to decide if I like it or not. It's got the low cut switch on it, and right now I have it turned off, but uh, right there I just kicked the low cut switch in, so it probably thinned out my audio just a little bit, maybe a little better for getting through like a pile up, I'm not sure, but uh, some people prefer it like that, especially if the conditions are rough. And uh, there it is back off, so there's my base uh, again, uh, which is the low cut uncut, I guess I should say. So I'm not sure which you prefer, but I guess I'll be able to hear it on the playback on your radio show from Whiskey 3. Golf Tango Radio, back to you, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor. Roger, Scott. Well, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you're right. Uh, the uh, uh, low cut did uh, kind of... Um <laughs> cut the bottom end. Uh, I think uh, that microphone is ideal for you. I, you know, uh, it, it just is uh, a beautiful frequency response, uh, and it uh, sounds really. You sound really great on it. I, I don't think uh, that you really have to cut the bottom to uh, compete uh, in a pileup. The EQ is such that uh, I think uh, just uh, that uh, one way. Uh, you know, without the uh, cut, is uh, you know can go either way beautifully, right? Sure. Yeah, copy that. Um, a lot of the, the ranchers that I talk to say that my, um, my AC radio is louder even though uh, while I'm running the band poster. So I wonder if I can turn up the mic in on this radio and still get a little louder as far as uh, cutting through. So maybe I'll try that with you while I'm on the air. Um, right now I have the mic gain set to um, 60%. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, let's go up to 70 and see if that makes much of a difference. So right now the mic gain is on 70% now. I'm just curious if that makes any difference or if it's uh, too over the top. If it made uh, any significant change, that would be worthwhile keeping it at 70%. Roger. Well, it is uh, over the top. I, my personal preference, I can, I can begin to hear you up against the wall, uh, meaning no, no dynamic range. And I think uh, audio has to have a, a certain swing to it, a certain dynamic range where it feels warm. When you start up against the wall, there's no warmth left. I mean, it, it just, uh, there's no breathe, there's no breath. It's just uh, up against the wall, you know. And uh, I prefer the way you, you came in the, the, in the beginning, you know. You had, uh, you know, your mic uh, had a nice bottom end to it, and your dynamic range was about uh, maybe 3 dB, maybe 2.5, uh, but uh, somewhere in that area and uh, I think that's uh, just ideal Roger and you you can hear it on the playback yeah I copy that and that's why I did it while I was on the air with you because I, I really w truly wanted to hear it I put it back to 60% I'm running the compression at 2 and um, I forget how I have the EQ set I'll have to look at it but um, I think I have the bass turned down and the treble maybe at 0 and uh, and I know I'm running the, the radio on its wide uh, setting copy Oh yeah, white setting, sure. And uh, I would prefer that you run uh, a three on compression and back off your gain to 45. Uh, I think that uh, works out a little bit better. You don't hear quite as much uh, breathing, Roger. All right, well, I'm going to do that while 
I'm talking to you. So the compression is now just moved it to three, and I am backing the uh, the audio back to. Let's try it at 50 at first, and see if it needs to go more. All right. So that is the compression at three. Right yeah, I think that's great right there, man. I, I really like that. Uh, you know, two is uh, and the and the other way works. You know, but it's I think it it doesn't have quite the quite the. Uh, the dynamic range that you you do uh, this way and uh, uh, my pr preference but you know listen to the tape man it t tells no lies uh, I, understand, I understand but uh, I just figured I would uh, check it out there all right so I'll try it like this for a little while I have something new to try out I moved the compression to three and I backed the mic gain from 60 to 50 so uh, up one and down ten um, maybe this will make a difference or maybe it won't but uh, when I listen to your recording I'll have to decide Roger, Roger. Three's that way, sir. Thanks for checking in, man. Uh, and uh, join us next Friday if you get a chance. I think we had another station out there. Other station, are you still there? Thanks for the help. I'm going to say something. Three, two, three, call Tinger Radio. Two, Alpha, Delta, Alpha. Roger, Scott. Three's that way, sir. And uh, that other station, had called Tinger Radio. Three, two, three, call 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 Oh, well, Gone with the Wind. Neat movie. This is KC9VKV. We're uh, recording now live till 5. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Alpha, Delta, Alpha. Come back with the complete call sign, please. Back with the complete call sign, please. Uh, good afternoon, Jim. My name is Andy, and the uh, call is Kilo 2, Alpha, Delta, Alpha. Roger, Roger, Andy, what's your location, sir? Roger, Andy, what's your location, sir? So the location is in North Central Florida, North Central Florida, uh, south of Gainesville. Okay, I just went to the Atlanta SDR. Come back and tell me about your uh, antenna system. Let me hear you for a minute. Antenna system, let me hear you for a minute. Okay, very good. Um, we have chatted before, and I've uh, found... Uh, um, both your impressions of the audio and the recordings invaluable, so I thought I'd try it again. This is a uh, new radio, uh, to me anyway, it is the Yezu STDX 101B, and uh, I'm um, also aware the antenna is an uh, antenna with uh, two full-size elements uh, on 40. Back to you. Uh, Roger that. Yeah, I had to uh, move off uh, Atlanta map to uh, my uh, 7300. Uh, you're uh, sounding good, but you need, I think, a little more top end. Are you familiar with your radio? Uh, I am, yeah. Uh, it has a uh, full uh, parametric uh, EQ, so I'm going to have to uh, get into the uh, menu system just a little bit there to uh, get to that position. All right. Uh, <laughs> parametrics are always so nice when you're on the air because they uh, usually take a little while to to uh, to adjust up. But anyway, I'm looking for a syllabic range, something around uh, 3KC, 4KC, 5KC with the SSR, you know, uh, to just give you a little the top uh, articulation in your audio. Okay, right now the top uh, uh, parametric is at 2100. Let me see if I can move that up a bit. Okay, now it's at uh, 3,000. Uh, it's at 3,000 with the level at plus 5 and the width at 8. Okay, now uh, take a look at your uh, ALC meter. You sound a little pushed, so uh, look at your ALC meter and make sure you're, uh, you're running that uh, at mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger. Okay, let's... Uh, yeah, the ALC is actually um, just about mid-scale, so it's... Uh, uh, I would say at about uh, uh, 35 to 40%. All right, uh, so, uh, sir, with the station just checking in the frequencies in use. Uh, this is a control network. Uh, you give a shout uh, when we uh, finish. Uh, anyway, so the uh, radio there, uh, are you running uh, a compressor? Is that a Roger? AMV, uh, that works independently of the processor. So uh, I think right there I have the processor out, and this is, uh, or they call it AMC, uh, and the AMC is currently out. 
Yeah, I would uh, forget the AMC. Go back to your compressor and uh, put it on a three. Uh, that compressor uh, will sound great on a three. Roger, Roger. Okay, there is the uh, compression uh, at uh, three. Alrighty, and uh, tell me what the best thing you like about your radio. Well, I love the receive audio. Um, I was running uh, Flex Radio 6600 and thought that it had 6600 and thought that it had some of the nicest naturalist, uh, natural sounding uh, receive audio that I had heard, and this radio is a little better. It's just uh, completely non fatiguing. Um, and just sounds terrific. I really am impressed with it. Of course, that's only working with it for about two weeks. Uh, Roger that. Now I'm copying you on the Rochester SDR. Um, uh, so you've got a parametric there. Uh, what is that? Uh, how many? 10-band uh, uh, ten, ten uh, parametric? 10-band uh, parametric? No, it's only three. They give you three, but it's uh, they give you uh, the uh, opportunity to select uh, uh, at what frequency you'd like to uh, dial it down or dial it up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, gosh, uh, you had that one. What was the frequency you had the, the first one at? You had the, the first one at? Uh, the original, I think I had it at... Um, I can't bring it up on uh, your transmitting, but I believe when we first started, I had the top range. I had the top range uh, at 2100,000. Roger, Roger. Sounds good. I'd just leave it like that. You know, uh, your dynamic range is uh, nice, uh, and uh, that uh, EQ curve uh, for uh, you know, uh, your. What do you do mostly? Do you do contest or QSO? Do you do contest or QSO? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, I would say that this is typically the station that I do my contesting in, so I wouldn't mind uh, a little bit um, uh, more on the articulation side and less on the full range audio side for this particular radio. Roger that. Okay, I, st I still feel uh, uh, and hear a little push there. Uh, you you're watching your ALC, and your ALC meter is running mid scale to two thirds. Is that a Roger? Mid scale to two thirds. Is that a Roger? Uh, it's actually just a little bit less than that. Um, yeah, I would say it's at about one third right now. Roger, Roger. Okay, and your uh, your processor is at a three. Your processor is at a three. Uh, yes, sir. The processor is at three, and uh, the mic gain's at uh, about fifty. I can try make moving the uh, mic gain down to about forty. Uh, did that make any kind of noticeable difference? Um, uh, need a little more, more time. Uh, tell me about uh, uh, the uh, mic that you're using. The uh, mic that you're using. Uh, the mic is a uh, uh, Heil uh, Pro. Uh, I guess it's just called the Pro Set with the uh, HC6 element. Um, they're a typical um, uh, set model. Um, nothing special about it. Um, yeah, the, uh, it, it's interesting because they do have this other audio circuit where I, where uh, the AMC, where uh, I'm going to have to uh, do a little bit more reading to see how that interacts at all with um, uh, the processing and gain. Um, it seems to be separate. They suggest that you set. They suggest that you set that at one point with your uh, processing and um, mic gain, but uh, I don't know much more about it. Which mic? Roger, Roger. Well, it sounds you know I was I would go with it. Uh, you might try uh, bringing that mic gain back to uh, what? Where'd you have it, uh, Max? I had it at fifty, and it is again at fifty. So this is at the fifty setting uh, on mic gain. Yeah, it sounds a little push there. I would go back uh, to uh, fifty. I guess that's where you came from, right? I started at fifty. I brought it down to uh, forty. Right now, it is at forty-five. Yeah, I would I would run there. That sounds good. Otherwise, you you get uh, up against the wall and it starts to sound a little dirty. Not not a bunch, but you know it's headed headed that way. So when you pull back, it sounds a lot nicer. All right, great. Well, I'll leave it here and uh, we'll go with that. And um, I'm sure it'll be fine. I've gotten um, nice reports on it, um, but I wanted to uh, spend a bit more time with you and uh, really kind of dial it in. Thanks as always for your help and. Uh, I look forward to uh, hearing the recording. Uh, K2ADA, thanks again, Jim. Roger, Roger. Three Z Waster. Have a great weekend. Uh, this is KC9 VKV and the uh, Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. And uh, I think somebody else was checking in there. Who is that uh, other person checking in?
Whiskey 8, Tango Alpha Tango. Roger, Whiskey 8, Tango Alpha Tango. What's the name? Name is Tim, and I've never, uh, never heard anything or an, any response of, uh, from my radio. I'm kind of a new ham. I've only been at it for a couple of years now, but uh, this, I just happened to cross, and I've been sitting here listening to you for the last uh, probably 15, 20. I said, this would be neat to know whether or not uh, how this radio actually sounds and what I sound like. Uh, Roger, what radio is that? I have a 7300. I run a, a vertical uh, Chris Craft R7, old R7 uh, antenna. Sometimes I use uh, an MSJ, I think it's a 5970 antenna, uh, but right now I'm on the vertical. Uh, Roger that. Well, uh, do you are familiar with your uh, 7300? Just a little bit, enough to get around and set things. All right, uh, go to your EQ, uh, your um, tone control, and uh, let's see what you got there for uh, settings. Maybe I don't know enough about it that I can get there. Uh, there's a button. Um, well, let's see. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, let me just give you some notes to uh, work on when you when you find uh, everything. That w that would be great. Thank you. All right. I want to uh, bring up the uh, top end EQ a couple of clicks. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> I come calls it uh, treble control. Uh, you want to adjust your treble EQ up uh, two clicks from wherever it is. Up two clicks from wherever it is. Roger. Roger that. All right, now on your uh, com your, your compression, uh, you want uh, to set that at a three. You want to be a three on your your processor or the compressor, Roger. Roger that it is now. All right, and then um, with the mic gain in hand, adjust your uh, ALC until it's running uh, mid scale to uh, two thirds, Roger. Roger. That. Uh, I come. You have to um, hit transmit, and then you have to reestablish uh, your ALC, Roger. Roger that. I, I'm getting. So anyway, uh, if you can get that ALC adjustment, uh, you'll be uh, pretty close to uh, done for the moment. Outside of the uh, top end EQ, uh, Roger. Roger. It's, uh, I'm at a uh, little over. Uh, um, 50% on the ALC. Roger. Ideal is uh, between mid-scale and two-thirds. The sweet spot is halfway between mid-scale and two-thirds. Th two Roger. Roger. I will get it there. Roger, Roger. And uh, gosh, that should put you at about uh, 3 dB dynamic range. Average uh, percent of peak modulation between 80 and 85 percent. And you know, crank in those uh, couple of uh, clicks on the top end and uh, your uh, EQ curve will be uh, pretty, pretty near perfect. Oh, that'd be great. At least I know they can. Roger, Roger. So uh, we'll say threes for now. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, check back in uh, uh, next uh, Friday. Say hello. And uh, in between now and then, uh, if you would uh, like to go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, uh, you'll be looking for an entity uh, air check entitled My Group Air Check 122719. My Group Air Check 122719. Roger. Roger that. I will do that. Thank you. Jim, this is WATT saying thank you and 73. Roger, sir. Three is that way. Have a great afternoon and a great weekend. This is KC9 VKV and the QSO VLOG Network. If uh, you have a radio you want to check out, uh, give us a shout. Uh, something, something tango, sir. Come back uh, slowly, phonetically with your call sign. Japan Tango, VA3J.
JT, over. JT, what's the name there, sir? Name is yourself, Dr. Uh, uh, Jim, Juliet, India, Mexico. Roger, and what part of Canada are you uh, in, sir? Uh, Roger that. I was just going through some of the SDRs. Uh, I thought uh, Rochester might uh, have a better copy, but uh, I'm on my uh, local 990, and you're about uh, 8 over my uh, noise level, Roger. Oh, Roger, Roger, uh, Dr. Jay. Uh, just calling back here to, to, uh, to fix your Thank you for all your advice. Roger, Roger, Jim. And uh, that radio, what's that radio? Uh, this radio was on the ark with Noah. It's uh, an old Echo 101, uh, an old FT-101 Echo. Roger, Roger. Well, sounds, sounds great, man. Uh, and uh, you're doing uh, 100 watts? 100 watts. Excuse me. And yes, 100 watts. And the reason it's doing great is thanks to your advice. Well, you're most kind. <laughs> I thank you very much. Uh, that uh, radio is uh, an oldie but a goodie, and it, it sounds great. So uh, keep up the good work, uh, and uh, stay warm up there, Roger. Oh, yeah, thank you, Tim. I appreciate it so much. I went off for a walk today, uh, 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 Jim, and the wind was blowing right at me, so I turned around and came exactly at me, so I turned around Sorry, we have somebody that wants to tune up on the frequency. Oh, you would think that they would know that it's not a good idea to tune up on an active frequency, but there are those amongst us that are just strange. Anyway, uh, Jim, three's that way, sir. Let me let you go. Uh, uh, happy hunting, Roger. Thank you so much, and I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you for your great advice. Roger. Thank you, sir. Three's that way. Join us uh, next Friday if you get a chance. Uh, this is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. If you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shot. We're listening. Victor Echo 3, Victor Echo 9, Golf Kilo. There's a Victor Echo 3 uh, out there. Come back with a call sign slowly, phonetically. Victor Echo 3, Victor Echo uh, what's the name, sir? Name here is Mike. The radio is the A2FT uh, 2000 again with uh, parametric. So uh, I'm going to, uh, if I may, take your comments and uh, work on them at my leisure. Uh, back to you. Roger. Now, you, you sounded like um, you might have had... Uh, uh, needed to clear your voice. Uh, I'm not real sure, but uh, come back, uh, you know, just... Uh, clear your voice and, and come back again, please, sir. Uh, something to do with uh, Christmas cheer, I think. Over. Ah, yes. It, well, it sounded <laughs> it sounded like it might have had some, uh, uh, like you might have gone to a, a sports uh, thing and uh, just uh, really supported the local team on a large scale, Roger. Yeah, let's say that's what it was. <laughs> And uh, you know, well, gosh, uh, it, it, you know, to me, it's the, the the whole thing. You know, it's the voice and the radio and the settings and all that. And if one of them has a has a problem, uh, it it's hard to get past that to get to the other things. You know, but because uh, I, I, you know, that uh, could also be uh, a little distortion in the back end by you know hitting the AOC a little too hard. In addition to uh, maybe other things. Yeah. Right. Well, I guess the 
top one will be some uh, honey and tea to uh, get the catch out of it. He is just peaking at uh, mid-scale. It's uh, number 50 on this rig. Uh, so I don't think it's uh, at least I hope it's not. Over. Roger. Now, whereabouts are you located, sir? Roger that. I was just trying to uh, get a little bit better situation. I, we have uh, uh, two 10-foot uh, uh, mag loop antennas and uh, uh, three position switch controls them uh, so we can do each uh, mag loop separately or combine them in a uh, uh, in a co-phase mode and so many times in the co-phase mode they do produce uh, an extra 3 or 4 dB uh, dynamic not dynamic range but uh, signal strength uh, uh, because uh, essentially even though uh, they are, are oriented, and one's oriented north and south, the other east and west. Uh, when you get to a larger loop, like a 10-foot uh, diameter loop that these are on 40 meters, they really start to lose their high definition as far as uh, lobe, uh, you know, and uh, the, so there isn't necessarily a big difference uh, between uh, their orientation, even though one is north and south, the other is east and west. Many times they combine in that cophase mode. It's just uh, amazing, you know, and that signal just uh, pops up uh, 3 or 4 dB hotter than either one of them by themselves, Roger? Yeah, well, um, I can't comment on your reception, but your uh, transmit is consistently at plus 20, and of course, uh, perfect audio, and uh, not perfect voice. Roger, of course, we are transmitting on our... Um, our dipole antenna. We do run a uh, dipole antenna for transmit. We did go through the whole thing about uh, uh, the uh, shootout between the uh, mag loops and uh, the uh, dipole antenna at 700 miles in uh, many, many tests. And because we wanted to use the mag loops, uh, you know, as a, a viable transmit uh, radiating surface, but after many, many tests, it was just a foregone situation that the uh, the um, mag loops, uh, by and large, were um, a second ran as far as uh, our um, dipole antenna. Roger. Well, that's been my experience. I have a Delta loop just on 20, and uh, it's lovely and quiet on receive, and uh, it doesn't seem to go very far on transmit. So. Yes, Roger. Now, uh, when it comes to receiving, <laughs> it is a totally different story because the mag loop uh, comes into its own uh, with that. Uh, mainly, I think, because of the the Q tends to be more effective. The high Q ratio tends to be more effective in the receive mode than it does in the transmit mode. And I don't know why, because, like I say, we did run those. Uh, transmit test, uh, even with those uh, mag loops at a kilowatt, uh, we didn't do just do 100 watts on those mag loops. We, we, we did uh, kilowatts uh, at uh, 700 miles, and uh, uh, by and large, and over and over, it was that the dipole outperformed uh, that uh, uh, mag loops uh, as far as uh, transmitting. But in, like I say, in receive, uh, they, are, they are quiet. Uh, and uh, while, you know, you would normally expect some quieting in a closed loop situation, obviously the magnetic loop is not a closed loop. It's an open loop, but it ha has such high Q that, uh, you know, the noise is just uh, uh, unbelievable. The first time uh, we started running those as, uh, in the receive mode, I ran across a Canadian network on this frequency, matter of fact, and uh, the first thing I noticed was, going into it, the mag loop was, uh, let's see, it was 5 dB hotter in audio than my dipole. It was 5 dB hotter uh, signal coming uh, out of the, <laughs> that radio in the, with the, uh, the mag loops than with the, uh, the, the dipole. And past that, it was 3 dB 
uh, quieter than the uh, uh, dipole. So, in you know, if if noise is the equation that one ma measures signal, uh, then that uh, mag loop was uh, eight dB hotter uh, than uh, the uh, dipole. Roger. Mike, I'm starting to lose you now, buddy. Uh, I think you just slipped into my noise level. Let me say threes up that way. Thanks for checking in. And if you get a chance, uh, join us next uh, Friday. Roger, roger. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and this is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. My name is Jim, KC9VKV, and I'm better known in some circles as Dr. VKV. And we're recording now live till 5, so if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. We'll post this recording up on YouTube in the next couple of days. So when you go to YouTube, just do a call letter search for KC9VKV, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and that will take you to our QSO. So vlog page right now we're running about 870 air checks uh, you'll be looking for one in specific it's entitled my group air check 12 27 19 today's date my group air check 12 27 19 this is kc9 vkv listening alpha india 4 charlie oscar alpha india 4 station come back with uh call sign was was that the whole thing uh, it's Alpha India 4, Charlie Oscar, AI4CO, and the name is Randy. I'm in Tallahassee, Florida. Roger, Randy. Well, oh, gosh, uh, let me see. Yeah, you're running a kilowatt? Uh, no, 500 watts. I uh, can't tell the difference. <laughs> sounds great. Uh, tell me about your antenna system down there. It's an inverted V off-center fed dipole. And just out of curiosity, what is your SWR on your mid-band? Mid uh, it's about a 1.1 or something like that. Well, that's uh, pretty something special there. That's a, that's a good reading. Uh, it, uh, gosh, it's doing you great. Which way is it oriented, in, incidentally? Uh, it's kind of oriented north-south. Roger. Now, do you, have you noticed a specific east-west uh, capability more than the, the north-south? Uh, no, actually, they seem to be about the same. A little while ago, I had a nice QSO with a gentleman in Boulder, Colorado. Ah, roger that, roger that. I don't go, uh, I don't go west very, very well. I mean, I do go west, but not. I go east a lot better. This this whole thing's set up for an east uh, coast uh, operation, uh, Montreal to Miami, Roger. With a hot spot in North Carolina. Oh, Roger. So you're in Albany, uh, Indiana? That's correct. It's uh, just across the Ohio River from downtown Louisville, Kentucky. Roger. Oh, okay. Well, you have a great signal here. What are you running? Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> we're running a... Um, uh, 990, a Yezu older Yezu 990, pretty heavily modified, and uh, a SB220 into a, a dipole. Roger. Oh, Roger, yeah, that's a nice setup. It sounds very good. I'm on an ICOM 7300 and an Lcraft uh, KTA 500 amplifier. Roger. Well, the 7300 is just an outstanding radio uh, right now. I am using a 7300 uh, in addition to my 990. We're evaluating uh, the difference between uh, an older uh, but a goody and uh, the more uh, digital oriented uh, 7300. I have them on an AV switch. Well, actually an ABCDEFG switch. And I have a little, um, gosh, what are we calling that thing? Uh, it's a... Um, I got it here. So new, you don't even... A visual input source indicator. Now, have you any, any idea what a visual input source indicator is? Uh, it must be some kind of flag that tells you which source is selected. 
<laughs> Pretty close, yeah. It is a a, a six light uh, uh, Java that is associated with my input selector. And I input selector, I have the 7300, uh, the 990. I have Rochester SDR, Milford, uh, Pennsylvania SDR, Atlanta, Georgia SDR, and Arlington, Virginia SDR. So um, on the six position rotary switch, and then every time I move it around, do 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 do. The, uh, the lights go, and uh, the lights uh, then have uh, little names by them, which uh, indicates uh, exactly uh, where I've gone, Roger. Oh, okay, well, that's kind of neat. So uh, what do you think of the 7300 you're experimenting with? Oh, it's an excellent, excellent radio. Just just beautiful. Um, now, I'm more familiar with it uh, from the standpoint of the transmitter because we probably set up uh, at least 180 uh, 7300s uh, in uh, transmit mode and uh, so this is more or less uh, uh, we're kind of evaluating the receiver since uh, it is uh, you know digital processing as opposed to the uh, the analog that the 990 is Roger. Uh, Roger, so how, do, how does the 7300 uh, compare to the 990? Well, I'll tell you, the 990 is, uh, it's, it's a beautiful radio. I haven't noticed yet uh, the distortion uh, differences that I would have thought I would have noticed uh, on the digital side. Uh, and the, and the, uh, the noise ratio seems to be very, very similar, Roger. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, on the 7300, I'm not running a preamp uh, uh, one or two I'm just in the uh, attenuate mode, Roger. Okay. Well, you know, uh, so far I've been really happy with mine. I uh, had a 10 Tech Eagle. I got the 7300 and uh, and sold the uh, Eagle to somebody. And uh, I like it. My other radio is a L-Craft KX3 with 100 watt of amp on it. And um, I switch back and forth between them. But uh, to be honest, I think the 7300 is a more versatile radio. Oh, Roger that, Roger that. I think you're right. Uh, it does have a lot of bells and whistles that I haven't even begun to uh, evaluate. You know, this this may take. <laughs> My Elmer was so nice to uh, to um, have me experiment with this radio, and I, I tell him, you know, this this experiment may take at least five or six years. Yeah. Well, have fun doing it. Um, I actually have been toying with the idea of getting the ICOM 7610, but the price difference between the 7300 and the 7610, I could, I could buy two more uh, 7300s. Uh, yes, you can, but the thing is that none of those 7300s will have a drive control. Well, this is true, and none of them will also have the... Uh, the, the, the tune, the uh, automatic uh, filter that tunes uh, when you change frequency. Roger. The uh, drive control on the uh, 7610 is just an uh, outstanding device that... Um, Actually, it kind of picks up where the 7300 leaves off. Um, I mean, you can push the 7300. If you if you force the ALC on the 7300, you can get uh, 2 dB, a dB and a half dynamic range. But, uh, you know, you're, you're pushing that ALC. Now, with the uh, 7610 with drive, it is specifically set up to crunch dynamic range. And uh, what I mean by that is uh, if you have a 3 dB dynamic range, your average percent of peak modulation is going to be 80 to 85 percent. Well, drive, uh, we have conducted tests, and uh, uh, not uh, quote, quote, official tests, but uh, my, most of my stuff is sidewalk tests. But uh, we have a Taking that uh, uh, 7610 drive all the way up to 100%, and at 100%, your dynamic range is about a half a dB. And that is to say that uh, I'm looking at your signal on a VU meter. Well, when uh, when you get to a half a dB of dynamic range, instead of that VU meter flopping around like normal, it uh, more, looks more like a plate voltmeter. It just kind of dips there between uh, zero to uh, to a half a dB and back up to zero. It's amazing. Ah, okay. So. So you've had a chance to sit down and play with the 7610. Um, 
Did you experience any issues with it, or were you quite happy playing with the radio? Oh, I'd love to play with the radio, but somebody else's radio, that, that's the beauty about what I do. It's always somebody else's radio, pretty much, you know. And uh, so we did have uh, uh, an interesting uh, uh, experiment with, uh, with Drive, because uh, I was just curious what uh, the maximum capabilities of that little device uh, would be. And like I say, if you t would choose to run it that way, and I don't know why you would, because it's just so fat, but you can still understand what the words are but it's just a half a db of dynamic range is just too much you you want to get, <laughs> i had a nosebleed I, I need to get down to a, a two and a half to three db dynamic range roger oh, okay roger roger well i won't hold you james i appreciate uh the co uh, conversation so far but i've got some stuff i've got to do this afternoon so uh thank you very very much for the cue so and hopefully we'll talk again Roger, Roger. Now, what part of Florida are you in? Oh, I'm in Tallahassee in the, pan the uh, northern part of the state, in the Panhandle, uh, the state capital of Oh, Roger. Yes, my brother lives uh, in Tallahassee. Well, th uh, thanks for checking in, man. If you get a chance, uh, join us next, uh, next Friday. Uh, I'd love to have you. And uh, between now and then, have a great uh, rest of uh, uh, this Friday and, uh, and a great weekend. So threes to you. KC9VKV. KC9VKV, this is AI470, AI4CO73. Alpha Bravo 9, Tango X. There's an Alpha Bravo 9. I can, uh, you're about uh, 3 dB above my noise, but uh, Alpha Bravo 9 station, come back with your call sign again, please. Alpha Bravo 9, Golf Kilo, AB9GK, over. Roger, and what's the name there, sir? Uh, name is Gene, Golf Echo November Echo in Green Bay, Wisconsin, over. Roger, Gene, what uh, radio are you running, sir? Uh, Kenwood TS-990. Ah, well, uh, sounds good. Uh, tell me about your antenna system. Jim, I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I'm running a uh, step IR ground-mounted vertical, the large one. And for the counterpoise, I installed... Uh, about 50 feet of galvanized fencing buried in, under the ground and bonded to a DX engineering uh, ground radio plate and then I've got another 500 feet of wire above the ground but the new house, new yard, all that's been simulated into the grass. Over. Roger, nice signal, nice signal. Uh, did, did you um, wanted to uh, go to a vertical antenna for a long time or what? Used to live in Eau Claire, and we had about three acres. I got tired of uh, wire antennas, trees we had there. So I've had the Step IR since 2007, and it's performed flawless. Uh, KC9 VKV with AB9 GK Jim TU. Roger. Now uh, in snow and ice, do you notice any anomalies with that vertical? split when I was taking it apart when, from the move from Eau Claire here, so I'm not surprised that when we had a 60-mile sustained wind for about 14 hours, it came apart, called Step IR, and they had replacement parts to me within about three weeks, so I was pleased with that. Uh, back to you, Jim. Uh, Roger, Roger. I was just thinking from the standpoint of, you, if you get snow, uh, does your uh, SWR go up or, or move around at all? No, and I monitor SWR all the time because this antenna is supposed to be resonant from 40 meters through 6, and in the testing I've done with separate uh, SWR meters, it's pretty flat. I think the worst I got was 1.5 to 1, and that tends to be probably on this band, but it's pretty pretty good for SWR performance. And uh, again, applicable to your question, no, I have not seen any issues with snow or ice. I did ask Step IR when it was 20 below zero if there was any issues with it uh, tuning up, you know, the motor and that, and they didn't think it would be, and I didn't see it as well. Of course, that's an anomaly for weather, but uh, it does get cold up here sometimes. Back to you, Jim. Roger, Roger. Well, there are some anomalies uh, that manufacturers uh, tend to not consider uh, weather-wise to certain degrees, and I'm not sure why. And just, uh, you know, by the way, I, I once put this uh, uh, CB, uh, 
K-band uh, antenna together. It, it was a, 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 a directional K-band antenna. And th they had something about at one point you were supposed to push this button. Uh, and it was um, a, uh, a covered button, but uh, you're supposed to push it. And uh, I was pushing it and getting absolutely nowhere. And so finally, um, I called them. I said, hey, man, what is what is happening here? I am keep pushing this button. And they said, oh, well, we found out uh, after <laughs> we were manufactured that uh, that uh, cover on the button, when you get to uh, like uh, 10 degrees, between 10 and 15 degrees, that uh, uh, material gets so hard that you can't push it in to actually get to the button. <laughs> A little, little design flaw there, Roger. Oh, Roger, that, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the other thing that you learn is obviously from listening to other people and, and going on user groups, uh, being uh, aware that not everything you get is going to be pertinent or accurate, but uh, sifting that out. Hey, by the way, you're, you're 10 to 15 over on my uh, signal strength meter today, Jim, so you're booming up here in the Green Bay. KC9 VKV with AB9 GK to you, Jim. Roger, Roger, Gene. I just was looking at your your signal strength. Uh, I, I run a really uh, low uh, RF uh, input uh, in the front end of these receivers, so I don't uh, get any um, AGC suck up uh, between words on sideband. So uh, trying to get the best signal possible, and uh, so I'm looking at your signal uh, on a VU meter, and I have your voice calibrated for zero level, and then when you see speaking, that uh, which is left is noise, the uh, residual noise level, and uh, you were uh, 10 dB above my residual noise level, Roger. Well, that sounds good, and how does it sound to your headset if you're using a headset like I do? Uh, no headset, uh, but your audio is just, just perfect. I wouldn't change a thing there, Roger. Yeah, I've had more people com comment on that, uh, unasked, um, uh, what my, uh, what I've got my, uh, uh, Transmit equalizer sat at, and I've got many choices, but I've got lanes for uh, well, it's conventional, but then I've got it set up. There's many things you can do for the frequency, and I'm using hard processing right now, so uh, that seems to work well for my voice. Um, no one's complained, and I appreciate your input. Uh, first time hearing you on the air that I can recall, and I do appreciate people like you that are out there giving advice and uh, making this hobby, making us all a little better in our practices and in our performance. KC9 VKF, AB9 GK. Roger, I call his uh, Kilo Charlie 9 Victor, Kilo Victor. Um, and I did notice the uh, the compression there, and and what happens is that that does suck up between words uh, when you when you push that, you know, and uh, it uh, it does fatten your signal. But uh, I found that uh, you can get um, well, let's see, you can get sugar from other places that uh, you don't uh, necessarily have to get uh, from some places that, uh, well, what I'm trying to say is that uh, if you run your ALC between mid-scale and two-thirds, that is a very quick attack and release situation with the uh, with the limiter and so if you were to back off of your compression which uh, at any given time is really only good for about three or four db now you can you can run a compressor at 20 db but but you're listening to the cows in the south 40 between words you know and, and with a, a little more finesse you can run a lighter um, compression and just uh, push that uh, ALC mid scale to two thirds, and that will give you your, uh, your two and a half to three dB dynamic range without uh, the uh, suck up between the words. Yes, Roger. Now, what we normally recommend is um, particularly like on the 7300s, but it's a very generic generic uh, setup uh, for the transmitter. We normally suggest only a three, uh, only a three on the uh, compressor, 
uh, very light on the compression. It does what it, it does at a three, and then but it does not, uh, you know, so we're just talking a token amount on the compressor, and then uh, move to your ALC, and with your mic gain, then adjust your ALC to where you're running a mid-scale to two-thirds, with the sweet spot being halfway between a mid-scale to uh, two-thirds. Roger. Roger that, uh, Jim. I appreciate that information. We'll give it a try and uh, appreciate uh, your uh, information and use on what you offer out there. So may I offer this to you and yours? A very happy, healthy New Year, and uh, may we meet again on the air. So from uh, my house to yours, warm greetings, KC9 VKV AB9 GK. Roger, Roger, Gene. Oh, that audio is just beautiful. Uh, well, you should uh, go to YouTube here in the next couple of days if we can, we usually can get ourselves uh, to get it uploaded within 48 hours. But uh, uh, be uh, go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor. That will take you to our QSO VLOG page. And on that page, uh, we're currently running about 870 uh, recorded QSOs. But you'll be looking for one specifically called my group air check 12 27 19 12 27 19 roger have it written down because faded ink on paper is better than my memory absolutely <laughs> yeah and uh, so you'll be able to check your you know when you checked in and then as we made a little modifications and and you know think about the the uh, the, the, the warmness of it uh, as it stands uh, you know, but obviously, uh, and I think that will translate into a very good situation when you're contesting too. You know, because uh, you you have a nice uh, EQ uh, range there. Your top end is uh, very articulated. So that's the main thing about getting through a, a, a pileup is that they be able to hear what you're saying, and uh, and also when you have a ton of noise on your head and you're actually uh, one dB below somebody's noise level. If your audio is articulated enough, they can copy what you're saying, even though the noise level is hotter than your signal. Jim, thank you for that advice, and I have found that to be true, especially on pileups. I'm not running an amplifier, although this radio can run 200 watts out of the box. I'm probably on peaks at about 150 watts. So, Jim, thanks a lot. KC9 BKUV. TV9 GK saying 73 to you and uh, really appreciate what you're doing. Roger, Roger. Thank you, sir. Have a great weekend. Threes. This is KC9 VKV and the uh, Friday afternoon QSO VLOG network. If you've got a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. Five stations. <laughs> and I didn't have a handle on any one of them. Try again, please. I got a nine. I got a nine there somewhere. Let's uh, go for the rest of the call sign. Alpha Bravo 9, Tango X ray. Alpha Bravo 9, Tango X ray, Roger. Yeah, Roger. Thank you, sir. KC9, VKV, AB9TX, Northeastern Wisconsin. Operator here is Earl Echo Alpha Romeo Lima over. Roger that. And what radio are you running, sir? I am running the uh, an SDR um, made by ICOM, the ICOM IC7610 over. Did you say 7610? Uh, QSL. Ooh, well, well, well. Uh, come in. Tell me about your antenna. Well, I'm running the uh, ground-mounted vertical. Uh, the last gentleman had a, a step IR. I also have uh, the step IR, big IR, uh, ground mounted with about uh, 34, 36 ground mounted uh, radials over. Roger, what was the name again, please? Uh, name here is Earl Echo Alpha Romeo Lima. Earl, over. Roger, Earl. Uh, gosh, uh, you could probably could use just a little more top end EQ. Are, are you familiar with uh, your uh, tone control area? Yeah, Roger. I have it all set for flat. Uh, it's all turned off. Uh, I'm using an external. Um, Frequency is in use, sir. Frequency is in use. Frequency is in use, sir, please. Speaking of uh, mental illness, <laughs> Fre 
frequency is in use, sir. Earl, how you doing there, buddy? Yeah, very good, sir. You're peaking about 510, uh, 59 to plus 10 dB here uh, into northeastern Wisconsin. I'm located uh, in a village called Howard, just north of Green Bay. Over. Roger. Now, we were talking about the EQ. Uh, you might want to crank in a, uh, a little bit more top-end EQ to uh, define and articulate your audio. Roger? Yeah, Roger. Um, very good. Well, I have it set more for um, just simple red chewing. Um, I can boost the top-end a little bit. Test one, two, one, two, three. Over. Uh, yeah, I would come up about uh, three clicks on the top end. Uh, you know, that uh, the top end EQ doesn't have uh, anything to do with uh, not being uh, a QSO oriented, Roger. It's just the detail in your, in your audio. Okay, very good. Well, um, like I said, I have an external processor and usually monitoring it locally here is pretty much uh, kind of hit or miss because I don't know if I trust the uh, onboard monitoring on this rig. Over. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, probably not. But anyway, uh, that did you do, you did do a plus three, Roger, on the top end. Yeah, it's more of a um, it's an oral exciter on the top end of the. Uh, I have an Apex um, channel strip, external channel strip made by Apex. Apex and um, it doesn't really have uh, decibel uh, adjustments. It's just a, a boost or attenuation on the oral exciter. Over. Roger, I was talking about uh, internal radio uh, EQ as opposed to uh, outboard EQ. Yeah, I have everything turned off on the rig. Everything is set for flat. Over. Roger. Okay, buddy. Uh, I appreciate you uh, checking in there, and uh, you have uh, a great uh, weekend, Roger. Okay, thanks, Jay, for the uh, check-in, and uh, thank you for what you do. This is AB9TX73. And this is KC9VKV, the... Uh, QSO VLOG Network. Uh, from now until 5, we record live. If uh, you've got a radio that you uh, want to check out, give me a shout. One more time. Uh, I'll go around on the SDRs and see if I can f can find somebody outside of the uh, at the herd. <laughs> KC9 VKB, try it again, please. Kilo, Charlie. Whiskey Echo Station, come back with a call sign again. Kilo Charlie 9, Papa Whiskey Echo. Papa Whiskey Echo, Roger, what's the name? Name here is Dave, Delta Alpha Victor Echo. Roger, Dave, uh, whereabouts are you, sir? Roger, I'm about 40 miles south of the Wisconsin border. I'm sorry, I'm 40 miles north of Chicago, just south of the Wisconsin border, uh, near Waukegan, Illinois. Roger. So, um, if I'm jotting down something as a location, what uh, what state should I jot down? Well, Illinois, and uh, I'm about 40 miles north of Chicago. Uh, Roger that. Roger that. I didn't. You know, I usually try to do that, and uh, <laughs> sometimes when they're 40 miles from somewhere and 50 miles from somewhere else, I, I get to the point of saying, "Well, wh where were they exactly?" You know. Roger, Roger. I usually say Chicago when I'm talking to somebody from far away, and that gets me there, you know. Oh, yeah, and I say Louisville. <laughs> but now, in my case now, Louisville is only four miles away. How about yours? Well, right. I'm 40 miles north of Chicago, so I'm still close to a big city. Yeah, you are, but you're stretching it a lot more than I am. I, You know. <laughs> anyway, uh, what radio was that you running? Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, well, I've got a, uh, a FT-3000 here. I'm running off of a uh, off-center-fed dipole facing southwest northeast at around 35 feet. And the SWR says I'm probably running about 90 watts over. Oh, beautiful signal. Yes, beautiful signal. Um, that, now, that is... Um that's not a totally um, SDR kind of situation. You you have a radio. You have an actual radio, Roger. Roger, Roger. Because you never know anymore. You know, sometimes it's just all computer, Roger. Roger, 
Roger, Roger. Yeah, well, it's got a lot of bells and whistles on it. Roger. Well, I'm looking at your uh, audio on a view meter, and it uh, looks to be about uh, two and a half to three dB dynamic range. Uh, uh, average uh, peak modulation percent is uh, probably um, you know, 80, 85 percent. Roger. Roger, Roger. Is that good? Oh, that's perfect. That is perfect because you you want a little uh, life as far as dynamic range in your audio. It's when you get uh, up against the wall, Katie, that you uh, sound like you're talking to folks on the moon, you know, with uh, maxed out uh, audio that's just uh, shaking because it's so intense. Uh, you know, you, you don't want that, Roger. Roger, Roger, Jim. Well, my question was, um, I've been told that I, that people hear RF on my signal, and I just wanted to ask if you hear that at all. I'm sorry, what, what, what about your signal? People tell me they hear RF on my signal. Uh, I don't. I don't hear anything, but i tell you what I do. Um, I um, have a, a, an art preamp that uh, I'm running a, a homebrew condenser microphone and an art preamp, and my uh, gain control in the front end, I have... Uh, uh, 10 dB additional gain that I'm I'm uh, I'm potted back, uh, so I have 10 dB additional gain. So when I'm looking for RF, I just turn the mic all the way up, and that gives me uh, 10 dB above my normal mic level. So if there's going to be something lurking, uh, almost when I boost uh, 10 dB above my normal uh, gain, uh, you know I can expect to to uh, to uh, to get the wrath gods of uh, RF and the AF, Roger. I don't see any RF either. I want to thank you so much for um, you know giving me a uh, listen here. Roger, Roger. Well, that like I say, that is. Uh that's my test, and I think it's a pretty good test because, well, you know, when, when the beginning, um, you know, we said uh, we wanted a station that would be uh, 20 over from Montreal to Miami, and uh, so we, we got that, but along with that came some, uh, uh, some RF and the AF, and uh, we have a, <clears throat> a bunch of stuff tied to the uh, audio input of these radios and a bunch of stuff tied to the audio output of these radios and uh, that doesn't uh, that doesn't uh, boot well for uh, you know a kilowatt uh, three feet of way so uh, we did wind up uh, putting uh, three grounds in and a spider uh, two spider ground systems and a spider ground is uh, where you have uh, a bunch of equipment coming uh, to one point and then going out to the uh, ground. And we used a, a large uh, uh, split bolt to run all of our grounds together and then to, to the... Uh, uh, the, to the ground uh, rod, and I th we use mostly um, RG8, old RG8, because we're talking RF here, and RG8 to RF looks like a about a one inch uh, pipe going there. Uh, but we did uh, uh, have just a tad of a problem with uh, hooking our mic preamp ground up to the uh, kilowatt. <laughs> ground the same ground. It didn't make much sense that we're going to put this mic preamp ground to uh, the ground off a kilowatt. So we did divide uh, and conquer there, and we put the uh, the uh, kilowatt uh, and uh, the uh, antenna tuner and the antenna selector, all that stuff on one ground, and uh, got it away from the uh, the rest of the uh, stuff. Roger. Roger, Roger, Dave, you are dropping into my noise level. I had to go to Rochester to uh, pull you out a little bit. Yes, uh, ferrite love beads. I, I believe in those uh, a bunch, man. Get the ones that um, open up, and you don't have to, uh, you know, uh, take, take the wire and feed them through there. They just open up and clamp, clamp over them. I used uh, some uh, um, uh, tape. 
uh, to uh, make up if there's a if there's a cable difference between this the uh, input uh, through the uh, ferrite bead I just use a piece of uh, uh, gorilla tape wrapped around backwards and uh, put it inside there and it just uh, keeps that uh, cable just where it needs to be even if it's uh, smaller than theoretically what should be Roger more than theoretically what should be Roger Ratcher, ratcher. So, Jim, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much, very so much for your help. Roger, Roger. Uh, appreciate it, uh, and uh, you have a real good uh, afternoon, a great weekend, Roger. Uh, afternoon, a great weekend, Roger. Roger, uh, 73, and Happy New Year. GC9 PWE. Roger, Roger. The three's that way, Dave, and uh, you have, a, uh, like I say, a great weekend. Uh, this is KC9 VKV, and uh, we have 10 minutes uh, till 5. Uh, we do turn into a pumpkin at 5, so if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. KC9 VKV listening. Give me a shout. KC9 VKV listening. Kilo Alpha Zero Sierra Alpha Bravo KA Zero, same as before. Same as before. What's the name there? Name there. Name here is Harold, Hotel Alfa Romeo, Oscar Lima Delta, running an ICOM 7800. We're just running, uh, oh, about 150 watts out of it on a uh, inverted V that is literally up through the trees. A uh, beautiful signal. Whereabouts are you? A uh, beautiful signal. Whereabouts are you? Uh, I'm over here in Missouri, and uh, like I say, we're running the, uh, the ICOM 7800 and the, uh, the Heil uh, Pro microphone. Roger, Roger. Uh, and tell me about your antenna system there. Well, the antenna is uh, just an uh, inverted V. It's a uh, MFJ uh, 10 through 80. Uh, the 80 portion, of course, runs off the uh, coils on the end. And um, I have it strung out through the trees at the current time. Just put up a 200-foot uh, tower here because we're running Internet through the system here. And uh, getting ready to uh, hang the antennas off of that tower off to one side there, about six foot away from the tower, and then out. Roger, Harold. Well, uh, gosh, uh, we could uh, fatten that signal up just a little bit if you might be interested. Uh, yeah, I guess we could try it. All right, starts off with just a token amount of compression, a three. A three out of ten, a thirty out of a hundred, just a third of uh, the capabilities of that uh, compressor uh, uh, starts us on our way, Roger. Okay, well, it's on white. I'll have to go in here and set it up. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I didn't even look to see where this compression was set on this one yet. Uh, Roger, yeah, I was looking at you when you were talking. I'm looking at your signal on the VU meter, and, um, you know, I'm uh, setting, trying to set a level at zero, and then there are excursions going past uh, zero, uh, which indicates that uh, your, uh, your dynamic range is uh, more than, say, uh, 3 dB, and that 3 dB is kind of a, a perfect uh, amount ballistically to fatten that signal up. So if, um, if you are, well, I... Do you, can you check and see what your uh, your compression is? Yeah, give me just a second here. Right now, it's uh, uh, by the way, that right now it's set on mid range, but I can double check and see what it's set at. All right, you want to you want to run your radio at the widest uh, wideband possible, like like a hundred to twenty nine hundred, Roger. No, Roger, Roger. I uh, I get out here at night and get to work with guys, and I punch it, and I don't ever look to see what I've got to sit at. I did uh, stick it up here on the uh, white portion now. Roger, because that's really important. And and one when they're QSO, uh, well, when they're contesting, um, you know, it, you shoot your foot uh, yourself in the foot when you. Uh, restrict your band pass because the first thing that suffers when you go you know off your wide scale the first thing that suffers is the top end audio and there is all of your clarity you know and uh, you want to be in as wide as possible now I say that uh, and I'm talking about 100 to 2900 I know there are wider possible <laughs> band passes but I'm specifically saying that I think 100 to 2900 is is ideal. Well, that's understandable. Yeah, that would uh, 
it worked very, very well. If I get some of these guys on here Sunday night, we talk to guys that I've been talking to for over 30 years, and uh, one of them will say something, and then I'll change something and then, uh, not even think about it before I uh, shut down before the night then. Roger. And then after we get that uh, compressor on the three, then we move to the uh, the ALC. And uh, what you want to do on the ALC is with mic gain in hand, adjust your ALC to where you're running a mid-scale to two-thirds. Mid-scale to two-thirds on your ALC, the sweet spot being halfway between the mid-scale and two-thirds. Roger. No, Roger, Roger. Well, we're... Uh uh, let me see. I've got set on the ALC now, and uh, I can set that up. I was talking to uh, Bob. Uh, I know Bob pretty well, Bob Ryle. And um, we kind of set a few things up here, and then uh, that's been quite a while back. I just haven't uh, messed with it. You know, he gets busy with life. You don't, uh, you don't pay attention to what you're doing here. And I thought in my retirement years I would slow down a little bit, but I sure have not done that yet. Uh, age here is 69 and a half there. Uh, you're a, you're a whippersnapper. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that AOC is important set uh, that way because it uh, that is what actually determines your dynamic range. Uh, if you're um, below that, then uh, your dynamic range becomes elongated. You know, if we say that average speech without processing is uh, has a 10 dB dynamic range, which means that the, there's a difference of 10 dB between the lightest uh, words that you speak and the strongest words that you speak ballistically, or you know. Uh, so what we want to do for broadcast for uh, radio transmissions is uh, try to close that dynamic range and fatten it up a little bit so uh, you know you arrive uh, at uh, possibly twice as loud as you would if you had a 10 dB dynamic range. So uh, anyway uh, after it's all said and done the ideal thing is that your your dynamic range is about to t two and a half to three dB and uh, your average uh, percent of peak modulation is uh, between 80 and 85 percent. That, that's a nice fat signal without any kind of uh, sounding like you're up against the wall or distortion or anything like that. No, oh, Roger, Roger. Yeah, very understandable there. And I'm running just a little bit high on my, uh, uh, hey, oh, there we go. Let me get it up here where I've got it just about, that's about peak where I think it should be right in there. Roger, <laughs> the hardest thing to do is set the ALC without, quote, setting the ALC. <laughs> Hello, just one, two, three, you know. Uh, that's the hardest part is just to capture it. I, I guess, you know, one way you could do it is just kind of look at the ALC meter, uh, not, uh, not stare at it, but kind of just catch it in the bottom of your, or in the top of your eye vision, and just kind of uh, adjust it there, so you don't really pay attention to what you're doing, and, uh, you know, because what you want to do is set that ALC at, at your very natural uh, mic uh, situation, you know, where you're, you're on access to the microphone, but you're not, like, quote, setting the level. You just, you know, adjust it for where it, re it reads mid-scale to two-thirds as you speak. Uh, we do another thing with, uh, like, uh, watt meters. Um, if uh, you have a watt meter that's uh, within your view as you're speaking on your microphone, if you move that, mic uh, that uh, watt meter to PEP, and then uh, look at it as a view meter. And as you're speaking, and uh, what you want to do is to keep that uh, needle on the uh, watt meter at the uh, just that right uh, uh, sweet spot you know and that that has to do with uh, the the volume that you speak and also the rate that you speak if one talk like that that meter is going to fall down be between words but if you're just speaking like normal that meter will just just hang up there you know and and so uh, as you're watching that meter you're cognizant of the fact that you want to offer the best possible signal and you uh, bring from yourself your your abilities to uh, keep that meter uh, you know up there along with your radio's capabilities Roger. Oh Roger Roger yeah we're uh, I'm running ALC right now Oh, my LC's running about uh, about three fourths of the way up right there, so it's not doing too bad. And uh, yeah, you're right. You've, you've got to catch it in between the drops, or uh, 
Uh, instead of everybody wondering what the peak is, you know, which is just the wrong way to look at it. So, uh, thoroughly understand that. Roger. So now, as I'm looking at your uh, your audio on my view meter, I'm seeing it, it, it's set for zero, and every peak comes right to zero. There's no blow by, no pass through. Uh, zero is the limit point, and and your radio is coming to that point each uh, each peak. Roger. Oh, Roger, Roger. Good deal. Good deal. Well, it's uh, you know, like I said, sometimes at night I I operate late at night and I get talking to guys on 75, 80 meters and. We're sitting there yakking away, and uh, one guy will say something, and I'll make an adjustment, and then not even think about it the next day when I get on. But uh, I sure love the rig. I've had it for a uh, long time, and it seems to do a good job. A lot of the guys are buying the 7300, and they're a sweet sound radio. Really do a fantastic job. Roger, Roger. I'm copying you right, to, right as we speak on a 7300. I'm set up with uh, two receivers. Uh, on my input selector, I'm running the uh, 7300 in the evaluation, and uh, my normal uh, radio is the uh, Yaesu uh, uh, FT990, uh, and uh, so there, I have a six-position rotary input selector for audio, uh, two radios plus four uh, internet uh, SDRs, and uh, then I have a um, what do we call it? We call it a visual input source indicator, <laughs> which is uh, uh, six lights on a, uh, a pad with uh, the names of what they are. So as I switch my um, uh, input selector, the um, lights go and represent uh, where we where we are visually. So when folks look back on our um, our QSO Vlog uh, video, they'll know exactly where I was uh, at the time. Um, because of the indicator, Roger. Oh, Roger, Roger. Yeah, that's great. And it, uh, uh, those things do a fantastic job. I love them. Um, and uh, I, I do a lot of work here. I've, I've got five repeater systems, and I've set them all up. And uh, I carry a lot of equipment here to set stuff with. And uh, the worst thing I do is a lot of times I don't set my own. Uh, I'm too busy trying to get everybody else or whatever, and then I kind of neglect my own. That's my own fault. But uh, Sometimes it does happen. <laughs> anyway, okay, I know you're busy. I'm trying to get out of there about 5 o'clock, and uh, I believe I'm going to jump in the pickup, run up to the uh, town up here, and uh, catch my son in law. Sounds like he's going to put a ton of uh, wood pellets in the back of my pickup for our, uh, our wood stove there. So we've got good heat. But I uh, hope you had a good holiday. Thanks a lot for bringing that to my attention, and I appreciate it. Uh, you're sounding great down here. Good, good audio all the way through. Maybe one of these days I'll hook up an amplifier there. I don't know. K-A-0-S-A-B. Well, you're uh, 10 over. <laughs> you're 10 over right now on my uh, 990. 10 over, you know, like I say, I run really light uh, uh, RF gain in the front end uh, so as not to uh, uh, suck up uh, uh, noise between words uh, to keep, keep it out of uh, AGC compression. And uh, so uh, what I'm left with is looking at uh, residual noise levels after I set uh, zero level for voice peaks. Uh, that which is left after they see speaking is my residual noise level, and you are uh, 10 dB over my residual noise level. And I found that it does interpolate very close to, uh, to like, uh, 10 over S9. Roger. No, oh, Roger, Roger. Well, it, uh, it, it, uh, you're doing a great job. It sounds good. And uh, sounds like you've got it set up uh, just perfectly. So uh, there's, there's no problem there at all. Uh, good, good sound radio there. I'll say that for it. Roger, thank you, sir. And if you would be interested, uh, we are recording this and have been since 3.30. And uh, we, if you would uh, want to hear your audio, which is just uh, really nice, uh, if you went to YouTube and did a call letter search, for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that would take you to our QSO Vlog page. And uh, you'll be looking for one uh, QSO in specific, and that would be one entitled My Group Air Check 122719. 122719, My Group Air Check. Roger. Roger, Roger. I sure appreciate that. We'll, we'll have to go through that and look that up there so uh, and, uh, and see what it sounds like. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Again, uh, hope you had a good holiday and a happy new year to you there. And, uh, we'll see if we can uh, listen around and catch you again sometime. KA0SAB Herald here down in southwest Missouri. 
Roger, Roger, Harold 3 Zetway, sir. Thanks for checking in. If you get a chance, uh, join us next Friday. Love to have you. And with that, uh, we will wrap up our QSO uh, Vlog uh, network for Friday afternoons. We have been recording since uh, 3.30. And uh, so we will post the whole hour and a half up on YouTube within the next couple of days. And uh, for those that participated or are interested, uh, if you go to YouTube uh, in the next couple of days and look for um, a, uh, well, you go to YouTube and then do a call and a search, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and that will take you to our QSO VLOG page, and we're running about uh, 870 some odd uh, recorded QSOs at the point, at this point, but you'll be looking for one specifically called My Group Air Check 122719. My Group Air Check 122719, and with that, we will return the frequency to normal amateur radio use. And uh, we'll say hasta la vista if you get a chance to join us uh, next Friday afternoon at 3.30. This is KC9 VKV. We'll be clear. KC9 VKV, WA0DJA for a quick one. Uh, quick one, go. Yes, uh, I was just wondering if you could uh, let me know what this thing sounds like. It's an old KWM2A, and uh, you sound great on this end of it. Name is Dick, located Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. Okay, Dick, what was the call sign again? Willie Alpha, number zero, Delta Juliet Alpha. Okay, uh, it looks uh, fairly loose as far as uh, uh, audio. Uh, you could fatten it up a bunch. Uh, let me give you a quick notes, okay? Uh, if you have a pencil there, um, engage your compressor at a three. Uh, turn on your compressor and adjust it for a three. Move then to your ALC, and with mic gain in hand, uh, adjust your ALC to where it's running mid-scale to two-thirds by speaking normally into the microphone, not a test level, but just a normal level that you would you would have uh, with the proximity to microphone like you normally have, and you would be on access to the microphone. So anyway, this ALC at uh, mid-scale to two-thirds, Roger. Then... Um, you uh, could go to your uh, EQ. Let me hear you just a minute. Uh, tell me about your antenna system. Okay. Well, I've got a vertical antenna. It's a Butternut HF2B. It's a portable antenna that I mount on a generator for any portable emergencies. And it seems to work fairly well. Um, it's modified for 160 and for 160. Um, that, that's it, plain and simple. Roger, Dick. Okay, when you go to EQ, crank in, uh, do you know where your EQ is? There isn't one on the KWM2. Is not one? No. Okay, uh, I would move then, uh, let's use a reverse uh, proximity effect, move closer to microphone. Uh, what we're trying to do is get a little bit more bottom end. Uh, you're very uh, mid-range. You're very mid-range uh, to top end, not much in the bottom end. So if you move closer to microphone, uh, that will start the uh, bass buildup. And we want to get about uh, two to three clicks uh, more uh, bass in that signal if we can. Roger? Okay. Uh, uh, let's see how this sounds right here. That's sounding better. What mic is it, sir? It's a Sure hand mic, a 404C. Okay, sir, I would suggest moving that mic to the side of your mouth, talking across it with it actually touching the side of your mouth, and uh, let me hear that. Okay, this is uh, touching the side of my mouth, uh, off to the side. Uh, when you're touching the side of your mouth, it's perfect. Just run it just like that, Roger. Roger, thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Um, I'll be listening for you next Friday. And uh, I, I've really enjoyed what I've heard today. Thank you so much. 
Roger, roger, Dick. Well, all things are possible. You don't need fancy EQs. Just uh, work the mic in that, that way, you know. Uh, uh, proximity effect is a well-known uh, uh, thing. The closer you get to a microphone, the more uh, it, uh, the bottom end builds up. And you can use that inversely. If you're real muddy, uh, back off mic, you know. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to have uh, uh, deaded uh, EQ circuits in your radio, Roger. You know, you, you've reminded me that back in the day, uh, mid-60s, this is how I used to hold the microphone. Exactly. Well, uh, you know, uh, with the advent of the uh, ICOM 7300 and their just absolutely spectacular hand mic that uh, comes stock with that radio, uh, you, you do have to work that radio, that microphone from the side because it is a uh, electrode capsule microphone. And if you work it directly uh, without a wind, uh, foam windscreen, you, you know, you will have a lot of mouth noise. But if you work it uh, from the side of your, your mouth, you know, it's just, you know, it solves all, most all of the problems and, uh, uh, you know, just is a spectacular microphone for that, that radio. I do suggest uh, running, you know, going down to your local music store and getting you a little uh, a foam windscreen to slip over that mic. Uh, you know, they're making these little windscreens now, the foam windscreens, that they're only about three inches long. They used to be real long and they would cover the whole microphone almost. Now they're only about three inches long and they just fit over over a, a hand mic just beautifully the, and they expand so there's there's not that torque that wants to try to key uh, the microphone because of the windscreens too too uh, taut uh, as it slips over that button so it just works out great Roger Roger yeah I have a 7300 I've also got a 7600 down in my regular shop I'm or in my regular uh, uh, down in the condo I'm up in my shop, and I've got an F flying column set up here, so that that's what I'm on right now. But I am am familiar with the Collins and and that or the uh, ICOM. I mean, and that 7300. I love that little radio, but I just can't let go of my 7600. Roger, Roger. Well, the thing is, uh, if you uh, in, are in such a manner of life that you can afford uh, all of them, the more the merrier. I'll let you go, and I'll catch you another time. But thank you so much for for the good words and and the instruction. I'll remember it. Roger. Now you're just uh, slumming with that radio, right? I'm what? Oh, uh, that's a joke. <laughs> that radio is, is an older radio. How old is that radio? 1968. Yes, yes, that was a very good year. I I'm not sure how old my uh, uh, Yezu uh, uh, FT990 is, uh, but, uh, you know, they, they really made some great radios. Right now, I'm doing an A-B test between my uh, Yezu uh, 990 and the uh, 7300. You know, the 7300 is uh, digitally uh, inclined and... Uh, uh, we're just uh, looking back and forth. I've got uh, I've got them on an AV switch, actually an ABCDEFG switch, uh, and I can just go back and forth between the two uh, and, and listen to the same signal. Now it's not a real absolute AV test uh, because uh, they're not both running the same antenna. The uh, 990 is running uh, is my transmit. Uh, uh, device and I'm running that on a dipole, and but I am running uh, two uh, ten foot mag loops on the um, 7300. Roger. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, how do, how do you like that 7300 for the price? I don't think you can beat it. Uh, no, no. I am, you know, I am obviously more familiar with the uh, 7300 from the standpoint of the transmitter. We've probably set up about 180. Uh, 7300s and uh, probably 75 uh, 7610s so I'm really familiar with the uh, uh, 7300 from the standpoint of the transmitter but I have no experience at all with the receiver so that's what what this is about Roger yes I'm, I'm familiar with which where you speak from I had mine for two years before I really figured out the receiver and and it's fabulous now I wasn't so impressed with it when I first got it. I wasn't unimpressed, but I, I didn't see where it was any better 
um, or, or even quite as good as my 7600. Roger. Roger. Well, you know, the the proof is in the pudding. I mean, as far as uh, uh, evaluation and Navy situation, uh, I'm listening for the uh, lack of distortion anomalies because of the digital aspects of the 7300. And, you know, that's a very subtle thing. Uh, and uh, so I'm trying to become uh, more familiar with, with the differences in my sidewalk survey. Roger? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, I better ID. This is WA0DJA. Roger Dick, and whereabouts are you? I'm at uh, Kaiser, Missouri, uh, the center of the state, uh, just southwest of Jefferson City, but I'm on the banks of the uh, Lake of the Ozarks. Roger, and which radio are you running right now? I'm sorry, you slipped under my noise. Uh, try one more time. Still under my noise. Let me try Rochester. Uh, come, back, come back one more time. Okay, you dropped way down to me, so the band shifted. I'm on a Collins KWM 2A transceiver. Collins uh, 2A, is that a Roger? Collins 2A, Roger. Well, I lost you. Uh, I'm not understanding you at present time. Ah, uh, Roger, Roger. Yes, uh, I'm copying you on the Rochester, uh, New York SDR. That's the only reason I've, I can contact you. But uh, that uh, your radio is a Collins 2A. Is that a Roger? Collins 2A. Is that a Roger? Uh, KWM 2A. That is a Roger. Collins 2A. Roger, sounds good. All right, let me get out of here, man. I've uh, I've been a uh, pumpkin for 15 minutes, Roger. opportunity we have. 7-3 and uh, have a happy new year from WA0 DJA. Roger Dick, happy New Year's to you too, sir. Threes. And this is a KC9 BKV. Got to get out of here now. Uh, we've enjoyed it uh, since 3:30. Uh, we recorded live. If you want to check out your radio's audio, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie Nine Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. And on that page, uh, you'll be looking for one air check specifically, and that is my group air check. 12 27 19. My group air check 12 27 19. With that, three is all. This is KC9 VKV returning the frequency to normal amateur use.